Hey, 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 good people. It's a victory day. It's a victory day. And it's day number two, day number two of our series, 10 Days of the Ascent. 10 Days of the Ascent. Come on in, come on in. Those of you on Facebook and those of you who are on IG, hey, it's a victory day. Come on in, come on in, come on in. All right, let's give, let's give them on the Facebook a chance to come on in. God bless you. Hey, it's a victory day. Florida is in the house. Let me know where you guys are checking in from. Florida is in the house. All right. It's a victory day. Hey, can't hear you. You can't hear me. Okay. Let me make sure I got it. Can those of you on Facebook, can you hear me? Can those of you on Facebook, can you hear me? Hold on one minute on IG. Those of you on Facebook, let me know you can hear me. Let me know you can hear me. Okay, good morning. It's a victory day. Those of you on Facebook, can you hear me? Those of you on Facebook, can you hear me? Facebook, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me on Facebook? Give me a thumbs up. Uh, can you guys hear me now on IG? Can you hear me? IG, can you guys hear me? Give me a thumbs up. IG, can you hear me now? IG, can you hear me? Can you hear me on Facebook? Hey, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks so very much for joining. All right. All right, thank you all so very much for joining. All right, it's a victory day. It's a victory day. It's a victory day. Hey, everybody on IG, can you hear me? Everybody on IG, can you hear me? Everybody on Facebook, you can hear me. It's a victory day. All right, hold on one minute. Okay, uh, IG, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? All right, let me know you guys can hear me. God bless you. All right, fantastic. It's a victory day. It's a victory day. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Glad you guys can hear me loud and clear. It's a victory day. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Fantastic, fantastic. Come on in. Come on in. It's day number two. Day number two, day number two, and while you're coming on in the room, I hope everybody had a wonderful night of rest. I trust that everybody had a wonderful night of rest. Did y'all have a good night of rest? Did y'all good? Thank God it's Friday. What did I say? Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. All right. Make sure you drink your lemon water. Every morning, I'm drinking lemon water, drinking some hot tea. All right, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we uh, get into the uh, where we are here for. Make sure you guys download my brand new app. How many of you already have my down already downloaded my brand new app? And it's also available in and um, I'll tell you exactly where it's available for. It's also available. I'm so excited. Uh, download this brand new app. If you got it, give me a shout out. If you got it, give me a shout out. It's also on Subsplash, Subsplash, Subsplash.com. It's also on Subsplash. So go ahead and download the brand new app. Amen. Dr. Jazz Ministries It's going to be a blessing. It can show you guys everything that you need. All right. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out, check it out. And then also, um, um, of course, want to encourage you guys to don't forget all of my products is in our website, finally me s where.com. Finally me s where.com. I got everything you need to work out. It's workout gear. And also I've got this new product. It's better to be six feet apart than six feet under. So make sure you guys check it out. 
check it out check all my products out all of the everything that you buy in the finally me wear store is helping us to do what we need to do on the island of trinidad so all of the proceeds from that product sale is going to help those on the island of trinidad and those in the Caribbean who is battling COVID-19. So I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, hey, let's get into the word of God. You guys ready for day number two? Are y'all ready for day number two? Let me know, give me some feedback, give me some hearts. Y'all ready for day number two? Let me know, you guys ready for day number two? Give me some feedback, give me some hearts, give me something, it's a good, good morning, it's a victory day. We are on a 10 days journey. How many days we on? We are on a 10 days journey. My goodness, how many days are we on? We are on a 10 days journey of ascent or ascension. 10 days journey of the ascent or the ascension. All right, how many of you guys were on with me on yesterday? How many of you guys were on with me on yesterday? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs up. If you were with me on yesterday, all right, if you were with me, if you started off on day one with me, give me some thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. Let me know you were on with me on yesterday. And let me encourage you guys uh, that you can go back and watch this, uh, these different days of teaching on my YouTube channel. You can go and watch all these different days of teaching on my YouTube channel on my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is I am Dr. Jazz. I am Dr. Jazz. Or just go in my bio in IG and there's a link tree there. Get into that. Make sure you subscribe to, I have two YouTube channel. I am Dr. Jazz. And finally me, the number four real. All right. So you can absolutely watch everything that we do in on our YouTube channel. So if you missed yesterday, if you missed yesterday, go and watch day number one. Go ahead and watch day number one. Hey, Vegas, God bless you. Go ahead and watch day number one on my YouTube channel. And that is I am Dr. Jazz. All right. I am Dr. Jazz. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, God bless you. We're glad to have you. We started this 10 days journey of ascension, 10 days of ascent. We're focusing on the next 10 days on our way to Pentecost and Pentecost is going is on May 31st. Pentecost is on May 31st. And we're focusing on this 10 days. How many days? 10 days journey from the ascension to Pentecost, from the ascension to Pentecost. Yesterday was the day of ascension, or it's known also as the King's Day. What is it called? It is also known as the King's Day, all right? So when we talk about the ascension, we are also talking about the King's Day. And I wanna give a shout out to my good friend, our Pastor Jamal Bryan, yesterday was his birthday. Hey, King, all right, yesterday was his birthday. So he was celebrating on the day of the ascension, okay? So ascension is important. Now we know the ascension takes place 40 days. How many days? 40 days after the, after the resurrection. 40 days after the resurrection. That's when the ascension takes place. And we know that Pentecost takes place 50 days after the Passover. Pentecost takes place 50 days after the Passover. Between the Passover, my goodness, between the Passover and Pentecost is the ascension, all right? Between Passover and Pentecost is the ascension. And yesterday we talk about three people we know in scripture, three people, how many people? Three people we know in scripture that transition from this life to the next life, that transition from this life to the next life without seeing death. We know three people who transition from this life to the next life without seeing death. And one of those persons is Elijah. The other person is 
Enoch and the third person is Jesus. And what we learned yesterday is death is simply a transition. We learned that death is simply a transition. And we also learned that seasons are transition. We are in a transition. So we know right now, this year, we are in a transition. We are in, we are in a transition. That does not mean we're going to die. It does not mean we're going to go to heaven now. It just means that we are in a transition. Now, we know that Pentecost takes place 50 days, 50 days after the Passover. Now, don't miss that. We know that Pentecost takes place 50 days after the Passover. How many days? 50 days after the Passover. Now, this 50 days signifies something amazing. We mentioned it on yesterday, and 50 represent what? Give it to me. 50 represent what? Give it to me. What does 50 represent? Go ahead, give it to me. 50 represent in scripture. All right. All right. Go ahead, give it to me. What does 50 represent in scripture? All right. It represents Jubilee. That's right. It represents Jubilee. It represents liberation. That's why it represents jubilee and it represents uh, liberation. We know we know that jubilee, all right, and we believe in God to liberate us. Now, remember, the children of Israel was in bondage for over 400 years. They cried out to God. God, God sends Moses to liberate them. And the moment they, the day they left, they left Egypt, remember this, they if they celebrated the Passover, what did they celebrate? The Passover. The dead angel came and passed over them. All right, they leave. I'm in the New Test Old Testament, and I'm gonna come into the New Testament, laying the foundation. They leave Egypt after celebrating what the Passover. What did I say? They leave Egypt after celebrating what the Passover. They leave Egypt and they celebrated, number one, the Passover. They honored the Passover. And when the children of Israel, after leaving Egypt, they will yearly celebrate the Passover. Anybody thank God that the Lord has allowed some stuff to pass over you? Who am I talking to? The Lord has allowed some stuff to pass over you. Stuff that should kill you, stuff that could destroy you, stuff that could wipe you out. The Lord allow it to what? Pass over you. Come on, just wave your hands over your head and say, thank God for the Passover. Thank God for the Passover. So they leave Egypt after celebrating what? After celebrating the Passover. Now y'all know when they leave Egypt, after celebrating the Passover, they get to the Red Sea. They cross the Red Sea and they camp at a mountain. Does anybody know what that mountain is called? They camp at a mountain. What the first mountain that the children of Israel camp? Where did they hang out? After coming out of Egypt, they go through the Red Sea and the Red Sea, they are camped at a mountain. Can y'all tell me what that mountain is called? Let me make sure you guys, all right, let me see, all right. What is that mountain called? All right, they came out of Egypt, they go through the Red Sea, and now they've camped at a mountain. All right, they camp at a mountain. Can y'all hear me? Let me make sure you guys can hear me. All right, can y'all still hear me? Somebody saying we're having technical difficulty. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? All right, so they cross the Passover. They cross, they cross, they come out. Can y'all hear me? That's right. They come out of Egypt. That means they come out of bondage. Hello, somebody. They come out of bondage. All right, they came out of bondage. I call them out of bondage. And when they come out of bondage, they cross the Red Sea. They cross the Red Sea. They cross the Red Sea. And after crossing the Red Sea, they camp at a place called what? Mount Sinai. That's why Mount Sinai or the mountain of Sinai, Mount Sinai. Let me give you guys a little picture because this event that took place is represent our salvation. 
We were in Egypt. We were in bondage. Hello, somebody. We were in bondage to sin. We were in bondage to Satan. We were in Egypt. We were in bondage. We were slaves in Egypt. And the Lord sends a liberator, and his name is Jesus, not Moses, but his name is Jesus. And Jesus, and, and he brought us out when Christ celebrated when Christ died it was the Passover Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 5 verse 8 but he became sinful but God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and our baptism is the Red Sea are y'all following me our baptism is the Red Sea. We came out of Egypt, which represents bondage. We came out of Egypt, which represents bondage. We are baptized and baptism is the washing or the cleansing, the washing or the cleansing. And now, and now just like the children of Israel, they are camped at a mount called Mount Sinai. Now, can you guys tell me what happened on Mount Sinai? Come on, give it to me so I can get back to you. What happened at Mount Sinai? All right, they crossed the Red Sea and somebody is crossing over. Who am I talking to? I'm not talking about going to heaven. I'm talking about you're crossing over in your mind, the cross over in your spirit, you're crossing over in your heart. By the way, yesterday you were supposed to throw out something old. You were supposed to throw out something old. Hello, somebody. That's on yesterday. So now you, you've you crossed over. You've been baptized in Christ. And now you are at this place called Sinai, Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai represents something important. It's at Mount Sinai, God invites Moses to ascend. Woo! What did I say? God invites Moses, he invites Moses to come up. Hello, somebody. What does God tell Moses? He tell Moses, come up. I'm in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. God invites Moses to come up. That's why we're studying the ascent, the ascension. And Moses goes up to Mount Sinai, he goes up to Mount Sinai and Leviticus chapter 23, verse number 50 says, and you shall count for yourself from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you bought the shaft of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be completed. Count 50 days, how many days? Count 50 days, how many days? Count 50 days. So the moment the children of Israel celebrated the Passover in Egypt to the time they get to Mount Sinai is 50 days. Are y'all catching this? It's how many days? It is 50 days. From the moment they leave Egypt after celebrating the Passover, hello, Scotty, and they get to Mount Sinai, it is 50 days. All right, and at Mount Sinai, God gives Moses what? He gives Moses what? We call it the Ten Commandments, but he gives Moses what we all call the law. What? Give it to me, law. L A W. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Come on. He gives Moses what? He gives Moses the law. Now we say the Ten Commandments, but it was more than Ten Commandments. There was a whole other law that God gave Moses. What did he give him? He gave them the Ten Commandments. All let's use the word law. L A W. Let's use the word law. He gives him the law. I'm going to tell you what God gave me when I looked at the word law. When I looked at the word law, God gave it to me. It means love always win. What does it mean? It means love always win. Give it back to me. It means love, love always win. All right. The law, love always win. And I got that t-shirt in my, in my store. Love always win. Because when Jesus shows up in the New Testament, he takes all the laws of Moses and he makes it into two laws. 
He said, here is all the laws of Moses compact into two. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and you will love your neighbors as yourself. So at Mount Sinai, God give them the law or the Hebrew word is Torah. T-O-R-H is what? The Hebrew word is Torah. God gives them the law. He gives them the Ten Commandments. He gives them what? He gives them the Torah, T-O-R-A-H. Now, that's the Old Testament. When we get to the New Testament, we're now in the New Testament, and Jesus is ascending into heaven, and on his way to heaven, he tells the disciples, I want you to go to Jerusalem. Hello, somebody. Y'all catching this? I want you to go to Jerusalem. I want you to go up. Everybody said, we going up, we going up, we going up, we going up. I want you to go in the upper room and I want you to stay there and I want you to wait there because what I did at Mount Sinai, I am now going to do on Pentecost. Did y'all catch that? What I did on Mount Sinai, I am going to do on the day of Pentecost. He tell the true, he tell the disciples, I want you to go to Jerusalem. I want you to go up into the upper room and I want you to stay there and I want you to wait. Somebody say, I don't mind waiting. Come on, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I want you to stay there because I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I did at Mount Sinai. My God, my God. I'm going to do what I did at Mount Sinai. God said everything that I did at Mount Sinai, I'm also going to do it on the day of Pentecost. Ooh, this is going to be good this morning. All right, everything he did. Now, now we focus on the Ten Commandments, but remember the mountain smoke, there was thunder, the hell of somebody. There was there was signs and there was wonders. Hello, somebody at Mount Sinai. So everything that happened at Mount Sinai, so we can say that Mount Sinai was the first Pentecost. What did I say? Mount Sinai was the first Pentecost. It is when God gave something. He gave something. And we know in the Old Testament that something was the law and he gave it to Moses. Now here's the amazing thing. In the Old Testament, only Moses went up in the mountain. Only Moses. But in the New Testament, after Christ's sacrifice, we all going up. Who, who did I say is going up? All. Come on, type the word all, all, all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. Come on, y'all got to catch up with me. Come on, keep up with me. All right. He, we, we all. Who, who's going up? Who is going up? In fact, there is 120 believers in the upper room. How many, how many disciples? There's 120 believers in the upper room. How many of them? There's 120 disciples or believers of Christ who are in the upper room. There's 120 of them who, hey, God bless you. Thanks for those of you who just joining us. There's 120. Remember at the first Pentecost, it was only Moses who went up and it was only Moses that received the Torah or the law. He came down from the mountain and he handed it to the people. But after Christ's death, after Christ's death, we all are invited to come up. Whoa, this is good stuff right here. Is this blessing anybody? We all are invited to what? To come up. All right, all right. We all that we all are invited. Give me the up symbol. Give me the up symbol. Give me the up symbol. Give me, give me the up symbol. We all are invited to what? Come up. So it's not just bishops coming up. It's not just elders coming up. It's not just popes coming up. Every believer is invited to come up, all right? To come up into the upper room. And we know when they get up in the upper room, just like at Mount Sinai, they receive something. They went up and something came down. Well, give it back to me. They went up 
and something came down. Ooh, and it's really not something, it's someone. They went up and someone came down. Hello, somebody. So now we are in the New Testament and here they are, 120 of them who are now in the upper room and they are waiting, they are waiting for the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. They are waiting. Now, before I talk about that, on their way up, so God instituted a law. He said three times. How many times? 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 Three times, three times a year, the children of Israel are commanded to come up to Jerusalem. How many times? How many times? Give it back to me. Give it back to me. I know y'all got to catch up. Y'all right in. Come on, catch up, catch up. Three times. How many times a year? Three times a year, the children of Israel are invited to come up. And the three times is key times. Number one, Passover. Number two, Pentecost. And number three, the Feast of the Tabernacle. What's the three times? Number one, the Passover. That is what you're supposed to be celebrating. We already celebrated the Passover. Number two is Pentecost. And Pentecost is going to be on May 31st. And number three, the Feast of the Tabernacle, which will take place in October. All right. So three times a year. If you go, okay, if you Gonna, if you're gonna miss a Sunday in church or miss church, don't you miss these three times a year? Passover, hello somebody, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of the Tabernacle. I can't wait to celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacle with you. Now, before we talk about uh, what they did when they were going up to Jerusalem, I want to just pause parenthetically and mention you and I that as Jesus, let's go to Luke chapter 24. As Jesus is ascending after 40 days of being on the earth, I got so many numbers, don't play the lottery, just sow the seed of whatever number jumps in your mind. Before Jesus ascends, I'm in Luke chapter 24, before Jesus ascends into heaven, he spends 40 days on the earth teaching about the kingdom of God. What is his focus? He's teaching about the kingdom of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's interesting to me, it's very interesting to me that before Christ's crucifixion, he focused on the church. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. All right, he focused on the church. But after his resurrection, he focused on the kingdom. Give it back to me. So give it back to me. The before his resurrection, he focused on the church. But after his resurrection, what does he focus on? He spent 40 days, Lawanda. He spent 40 days, Lady V. He spent 40 days, Roberta. He spent 40 days teaching on the kingdom of God. And we know, I don't have time to get into it. We know that the church is part of the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God is not the church. The kingdom of God is the will of God. In fact, look at the word kingdom. Look at the word kingdom. And you will see the, the word kingdom in the word kingdom is the word king. Ooh, all right, all right, y'all got it. In the word kingdom is the word king. So before his resurrection, he was savior. After the resurrection, he is now king. What is he? All right, he is now king. And we will say it like this. Before the resurrection, he is Lord. But after the resurrection, he is king. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that G In fact, that's what the scripture said. And God has given him a name that is above every other name, that at the sound of the name Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. So when we talk about the kingdom, we are not necessarily talking about the church. And I believe, I believe during COVID-19 and during all the things we are experiencing, we are now ushering the kingdom of God. Hello, somebody. I believe we are now in the kingdom of God. Hello, somebody. 
It's not no longer about the church. That means it's no longer about denomination. Give it back to me. It's no longer about it, your Baptist, charismatic, or Pentecost or church of God in Christ. No, we are in the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 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 On earth as it is in heaven. That means we are kingdom citizen. Wow, give it back to me. What are we? We are kingdom citizen. So Jesus spent four days talking about the kingdom. You are not a church member. You are a kingdom citizen. Who are you? Give it back to me. Who are you? You are a kingdom citizen. You belong to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. And Jesus spent 40 days talking about the kingdom, 40 days after his resurrection. Listen, you have 40 days to live. What would you be talking about? If you have 40 days to live, you're not going to be talking about President Trump. You're not going to be talking about CNN. You won't even be talking about COVID-19. You have 40 days to live. Jesus had four days before he ascends and he focused all of his teaching on the kingdom of God. And he described the kingdom of God in different ways. Is this good to anybody? He said the kingdom of God is like a seed that has been sown. He said, the kingdom of God is like a ye is yeast in bread. The kingdom of God is like a treasure in a field. The kingdom of God is like a fish net. The kingdom of God is like a merchant. And we're going to be studying the kingdom of God. So just stay with me. But what I'm saying is you got to get past the fact that you call yourself a church member. You are no longer a church member. Uh, you, are no, you are a kingdom citizen. Who are you? You are a what? You are a kingdom citizen. You are kingdom citizen. Now, 40 days after he finished teaching on the kingdom of God, after he finished teaching on the, I, I can't give all the reference scripture. We'll come back to the kingdom of God. All right. I promise to you, uh, Ms. Ferguson. All right. Because I've got 30 minutes and I got to get to where I need to get to, but we'll come back. We'll do a deep study on the kingdom of God. Thanks for asking. So after he teaches on the kingdom of God, Luke chapter 24 said verse 50. Oh my goodness. Did y'all see that? Verse 50. This 50 is a significant number. What did I say? Look at this. I just talked about 50 days and Luke 24 verse 50. Jubilee. I don't know who am I talking to this morning, but my God, it's your season of Jubilee. Are there anybody turning 50 this year? Are there anybody in their 50s? Where y'all at? My goodness, my goodness. Oh my God. Anybody got you in your 50? You're 51, 52, you're 53, you're 54. Where are you guys? Hello, somebody. 50, 50. It's the year of Jubilee. It's the year of Jubilee. It's the year of Jubilee. My goodness, you will not be boxing. You will not be restricted. You will not be confined. You're coming into your purpose. You're coming into your destiny. You're coming into your assignment. My God, it's your year of Jubilee. Even if you're not 50, it is still your year of Jubilee. My God, would you give God some praise right here? Send up some heart, send up something, and give God a radical shout of praise, however you do it. So verse number 50 said, and he led them as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. My God, he blessed them. Then he tells them to go to Jerusalem. Now, when the children of Israel would go up to Jerusalem, where they go? They go up. Up to Jerusalem. That means we go up to worship. Point number one. We go up to worship. Type it, type it. Point number one. We go up to worship. Where do we go? We go up to worship. That teaches you and I, you cannot go up to worship and still be down. Hello, somebody. When we go up to worship, we go up to worship. We go up to worship. Now we go up to worship. Hello, somebody. We go up to worship. Come on, we go up to worship. We take our praises up. We take our shout up. We take our hallelujah up. We go up to worship, but we come down to witness. Give it back to me. We go up to worship, but we come down to witness. Hello, somebody. We go up 
to worship, but we come down to witness. My God, you cannot come down to witness until you first go up worship. Oh, this is getting good. This is getting good. This is, he tell the children of Israel, I want you to go. I want you to go to uh, Jerusalem and go up to worship. Now, before I talk about the Psalms, my God, my time is running. Before I talk about what did they on their way up, let's talk about a little about Jesus' ascension or Jesus going up. We know from Luke chapter 24 that he ascended into heaven. Where did he ascend? He ascended into heaven. Look at Acts chapter 1. Let's go to Acts chapter 1 verse 19. It's about to get good. And y'all see all the stuff on the screen. We want to encourage you to sow a seed if you're able. All right, every day. And we're asking everybody between now and Pentecost to set aside a sacrifice a seed of $120. You can do it. You $120 in the upper room, $120. You can do it one time or you can break it up every day. It's $120 divided by 10, $120 divided by whatever. But between now and Pentecost, we want you to set aside a seed of $120 and all of the given information is already on the screen. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Let's go. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up. What did I say? He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right. Now we know where Jesus went. We know where Jesus went. He went back to the father. He came from the father. He went back to the father. Now when Jesus got up and he ascended into heaven, to the presence of God into heaven. What is he now doing in heaven? What is he now doing in heaven? Let's look about, let's look at it. It's so important. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. This is getting good. Is this helping anybody? Is this blessing anybody? Hebrews chapter 10. 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 Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's go. Hebrews chapter 10. Oh, this is good. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 11. I'm doing a 10 days revival. This is number two. I've never done 10 days revival in my life. Hello, somebody. All right, he's taken up. Now he ascends. He is in the heaven. What in the world is Jesus doing in heaven? What is doing in heaven? What is he doing in heaven? What is he doing in heaven? Okay, what is he doing in heaven? Luke chapter 10, verse 11 tells us what he is doing in heaven. In verse number, Luke chapter, my, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. And every priest stand manifesting daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. So he talks about the priests in the Old Testament will go into the temple and they will be offering sacrifice every day. But that sacrifice that they offer could not take away the sin. Verse number 12, but this man, who, what man are we talking about? But this man, my God, this man, we're talking about Jesus. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Ooh. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. But this Jesus, hello somebody. But this Jesus, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, how many sacrifices did he offer? How many sacrifices did he offer? How many sacrifices did he offer? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, hallelujah, after he had offered how many sacrifices? But this Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, one sacrifice covered my sins forever. Ooh. One sacrifice covered my sins forever. One sacrifice covered my sins forever. That's why I don't have to keep on offering sacrifice after sacrifice. The only sacrifice I need to offer is the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of service, the sacrifice
sacrifice of sowing a seed. Hello, somebody. But it said that after he offered one sacrifice forever, look what it says in verse 12. He sat down. Woo! What did he do? He sat down. What did he do? Get, oh my God, my God, my God. I need room to run. I need, I need a bigger studio. What did he do? He, he did what? He sat down. What did I say he did? He sat down. Now, come on, let's talk about it. The only time you sit down is when something is when you're finished. Hello, somebody. The only time you sit down, Lawanda, is when you're finished. Donna, the only time you sit down is when something is finished. You stand up to serve, but you sit down, my God, when you're finished serving. The Bible said after Jesus ascended, he sat down. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. He said, what did he do? He sat down. My goodness. He sat down where? At the right hand of the Father. Woo, y'all miss it. He sat down at the right hand of God. The right hand is the place of authority. The right hand is the place of authority. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. And look what he's doing, my goodness. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. From that time waiting to his enemies are made his footstool. Wow, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And while he's at the right hand of the Father, guess what he's doing? Number one, he's waiting till his enemy is under his feet. Number two, he's making intercession for you and I. Hello, somebody. He's making intercession for you and I. He sits down at the right hand of the Father and he's interceding for you and I. But he's waiting till all of his enemies become his, he's waiting till all of his his enemies are now his footstool. E Ephesians chapter one. Let's go there. Let's go there. My God, Ephesians. Let's go there. This is good. Is this blessing anybody? Is this blessing anybody? Is this helping anybody? Is this helping anybody? I'm mad. Amen. Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one, verse number 22. And he put all things under his feet. The enemies under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hello, somebody. The enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Hello, somebody. Where's the enemy? Where's the enemy? Mm, mm, mm. Where's the enemy? The enemy is under your feet. The enemy is not behind you. The enemy is not in front of you. The enemy is not over you. The enemy is not at the side of you. But the enemy is where? The enemy is under your feet. Suicide is under your feet. Depression is under your feet. Anger is on your feet, under your feet. Low self-esteem. The enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Hello. Where's the enemy? Ah, oh, the enemy's under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, hello, somebody. Where is the enemy? If you know the enemy's under your feet, send some feet up. Send some feet up. Send some feet up. Come on. The enemy is under. Y'all going to make me have to do it. The enemy is under my feet. Where is he? He's under my feet. Take your shoes off. Lift it up. Just look under your Come on, look under. Look, the enemy is under your feet. He's not behind you. He's not in front of you. He's not on the side of you. The enemy is where? He's under my feet. Feet. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for you and I, and he's waiting for his enemies to be under his feet. And that's where the enemy belong. The enemy belong under our feet. Get the enemy out of your kitchen. Get the enemy out of your living room. Get the enemy out of your mind. Get your enemy out of the out of your kids' room and remind the enemy you belong. Under my, you belong under my, you belong under my feet. Come on, send some feet up and remind the enemy. That's where Jesus is. Now, oh God, I got 15 minutes. Let's get ready. But just start sowing your seed right now, however the Lord leads you. Again, between now 
and, and May 31st, we're asking everybody to make a sacrificial seat of $120. However you want to break it up. You can wait till Pentecost Sunday, or you can break it up in pieces. However the Lord leads you, just go ahead and do it. Now, he tells them to go up to Jerusalem. And when they're going up to Jerusalem, they would read at least 15 Psalms. How many Psalms? When they're going up to Jerusalem, they will read at least 15 Psalms. How many Psalms? I don't know why I'm leaning over. How many Psalms they will read? When they're going up to Jerusalem, how many Psalms will they read? On their way up, on their way up, on their way up. How many Psalms will they read? Give it to me. They will read, they will read, they will read 15 Psalms. They are called the Ascent Psalms. A-S-C-E-N-T. They are called ascending sound when they're going up to Jerusalem in fact listen 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 they wouldn't read it they will sing it now let me give you an overview of the Psalms the Psalms is another word for the song s-o-n-g Psalms is another word for songs song 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 they will sing songs you don't read songs you sing songs the enemy is under my feet mm, mm, mm. hey Hey, 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 they're going up to Jerusalem. And listen, when they're going up, they're not pity, they're not pitiful. When they're going up, they're not walking around, woe is me. They say, shout for joy. Mm, mm, mm. Shout for joy. Mm, mm, mm. The enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, the enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. As they're going up, as they're going up, another word for Psalms is song, S-O-N-G, it is song. So when they're going up, that's why the psalmist says in one, Psalms 100, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving, enter his courts with what? Mm, mm, mm. See, some of y'all got it twisted. You, you wait till you got to church to open your mouth to sing. Now you sing before you get to church. You sing before you even, is there anybody out there who got a song? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Griffin, for your seed. God bless. How many of you, before you got the virtual church, or before you got, you started singing? Mm, mm, mm. Woo! The enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm, mm. The enemy is under my feet. Mm, mm. Mm, I don't know what your song is. What's your song? Before I mention the psalms that they sang, what psalm is your favorite psalm? Give it to me. Give it to me. Come on. I like interaction. Come on. What is your favorite psalm? The psalms is the Christian hymnal. The psalms is the Christian hymnal. My God, in the middle of the, listen, look where the psalms is. The psalm is smack dab in the middle of the Bible. Mm, mm. Mm, hello, look at the Psalms is. The Psalms is in the middle. That means you need to have a song in the middle. You need to have a song in the middle of your life. You need to have a song in the middle of your season. You need to have a song. Hello, somebody. Sing a song. The song, the Psalms is in the middle. The Psalms, the Psalms, Psalms 91. All right, sir. So I'm not talking about hymns. I'm talking about Psalms. Psalms 27. The Lord is mine and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms 150. Hello, somebody. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Psalm 61, one of my favorite psalms. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me the light on in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores. Lord, my soul, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. All right, Psalms 100. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter his courts with praise. I will praise it, my God, because the Lord is good. What did I say? The Lord is good. And Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes. That's my mama's favorite psalm. What's up, Zaina Fox? God bless you. You thanks for the seed. So they on their way up to Jerusalem and they will read or rather forget read, get read out of your mind. You see, we read the psalm, but they really will sing the psalms. They really will do what they will sing the psalms. I sing because I'm happy. 
I sing because Huh? Uh, they will sing the psalms. Psalms are psalms are the are, are the believer's song. They're the believer's song. And VGC, we've been reading through the psalms. Oh my goodness, we've been reading through the psalms. So today you were supposed to read Psalms 22. My God, my God. God, why has thou forsaken me? Now the children of Israel are going up to Jerusalem and they read, they sing 15 psalms every time they go up. Simon, thank you. They, they, they would at least, they would at least do a psalms every time they go up. And there's two psalms that we want to focus in the 10 minutes that we got. The first psalms is Psalms 120. What is it? We talked about it yesterday. Psalms 120. Y'all got to catch the numbers. The first Psalms is Psalms 120. Hello, somebody. Psalms 120. That's a significant number because guess how many people was in the upper room? That's right, 120 people are in the upper room, and the first psalm that they will read on their way up is Psalms 120, and this psalm is a journey psalm. It's what it's a journey psalm. It's a it's what it's a journey psalm. Psalms 120. In my trouble, I cried to the Lord, and He answered me, deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips, from deceitful tongues. Hello, Lord. This first psalm, it's a psalm to remind us that we are on a journey. What are you on? We are on a journey. What are you on? You are on a journey. This psalm is a reminder as they were going up to Jerusalem, they will be reading Psalms 120. My goodness. And it will remind them that they are on a journey. You are, what are we on? We are on a journey. We're not in a standstill because of COVID-19. We are on a journey. We are on a journey. They're on their way up to Jerusalem and they're are they reminded by singing Psalms 120? As they're singing one Psalms 120, they, they're reminded that life is about a journey and not about a destiny. Life is about a journey. It's not about a destiny. Number two, we understand also that because life is a journey, every journey has different season. Every journey has different season. Every journey has different season. Season of struggles, season of sadness, season of uncertainty, hell of Tina, thank you for your seed. Season of struggle, season of sadness, season of uncertainty. But life is also filled of seasons of joy, and season of peace, and season of happiness, and season of gladness. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. As they're going up, they're reading Psalms 120, and they're reminded that life is about a journey, and life has mountains and hills. It has mountains and hills for every mountain. You brought me over for every valley. You've seen me through. Hello, somebody. That's what it is. Life is about mountains and valley. Life is about season. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. That was Psalms 120. We read that yesterday. You were supposed to read it. Go back on YouTube and check it. But today is day number two. And that is Psalms, the second Psalm. That brings us to the second Psalm that they were often read and that's psalms 121 let's go there let's go let's go oh i got seven minutes psalms 121 let's go let's go let's go day number two the second psalm that they will sing on their way up is my mama's miss janet shepherd favorite town i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the maker of heaven and earth, he will not allow your feet to move. He who keep it you, the Lord is my strength by day and the shade on my right hand. And the shade of my right hand, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you, even from this moment on. Oh, my help, my God, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord, my God. You see, listen, oh my goodness, 
when you read the Psalms or when you sing the Psalms, you don't have to be on key. Hello, somebody. When you sing the Psalm, they did, they're going up to Jerusalem. There's no drums. There's no keyboard. There's no organ. There's no Jonathan Nelson. Hello, somebody. They always say, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence come it my help. My help come it from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your feet to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber nor sleep. The one who watches over you, he will. The Lord is your shades upon your right hand. My God, you all got to read it. That's it, Psalms 121 today. I will lift up my eyes. What are you going to do? You're going to lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. They're on their way up and they're singing. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Hello, he will not allow my feet to be moved. The one who keep at thee. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So Psalms 21 is a reminder of where our help come from. Woo! Psalms 121 is a reminder of where our help come from. Where does your help come from? Your help comes from the Lord. Your help does not come from the White House. Your help does not come from anywhere else. Your help comes from who? The Lord. Psalms 121 is a reminder that when we find ourselves in difficult time, when we find ourselves in trial, when we find ourselves in circumstance, we can lift up our eyes onto the hills from our help coming from the Lord. And the psalmist said, the one who helps us never slumber nor sleep. The one who helps us never slumber nor sleep. He shall preserve you. He will preserve you. He will keep your mind. He'll keep your spirit. He'll keep your heart. He'll keep your body. He will keep you. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. My God. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. Lord preserve you. He will keep you. He will keep your mind. He'll keep your soul. He'll keep your body. He'll keep your heart. He will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on him. Lift up your head. Lift up your eyes. Look onto the hills for your help. Coming from the Lord. Day number two. Psalms. 21. I will lift up my eyes. Father, I pray for every person on the other side of this device whose head has been bowed down, whose shoulder been bent over, who has been walking around in gloom. I break the spirit of depression off of them. And I pray, God, today that you will lift up their eyes. You will lift up their head. You will lift up their shoulder. You will lift them up emotionally. You will lift them up psychologically. You will lift them up spiritually. Oh, God. God, give them a song. Oh, God, give them a song. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes is on the barrel, and I know he watches, he watches, he watches, he watches, he watches over me. I sing sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes is on the sparrow, and I know he watches over me. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. That's day number two. Day number two. Psalms 121. Read it this morning. Read it at noon and read it at night. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. Father, thank you for every giver. Thank you for every seed. God, we pray that you are blessed in the name of Jesus. There's some of you, you're not saved or you don't belong to a church and you need to get saved and you need to belong to a church. I want you to just open your mother and said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into heart. I believe that Jesus Christ came, died, buried, and rose again for the forgiveness of my sin. In Jesus' name, if you made that confession and you're looking for a church, we want to know about it. Go on our website, victorygracecenter.org. Amen. We love for you to be a part of our congregation. We have the V is for virtual. V is for virtual. All right, let's get ready to give. Get your seed in your hands. Some of you already sown your seed. God bless you if you're having 
Get your seed. Hey, listen, every day again, a special seed of 120 in the next cup. Okay, uh, Miss Rivers, thank you for your seed of 120. Thank you for your seed. You can do it all at once, or you can wait at the end, or you can break it up. You can break it up. Don't you eat your seed. Come on, let's go ahead and sow our seed. Thank you so so very much. Thank you so very much for your seed. Father, we thank you for every seed that is sown. We thank you for the seed of the word that came forth on today. Lift up somebody, encourage somebody, inspire somebody in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Rivers. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Tina Campbell. Thank you, Sister Smith. Thank you for Vanetta Murphy, Lawanda Penco. Thank you so very much. God bless you, Cynthia Outlaw. Thank you for your seed. God bless you. If I was at your church and I preached like this, you know what they would do. They say, let's get ready to give. Well, what make your thing? Because we virtual that we still not assigned to do what we need to do. How many of y'all were blessed today? 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 Kimberly Simmons, thank you for your seat. How many of you were blessed today? Let me know. Tomorrow is day number three. Tomorrow is day number three. All right, day number three. All right, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace in the name of the Father. Miss Atkins, thank you for your seat. Thank you for your seat. All right, and the Lord give you peace in the name of the Father. He give you peace in the name of the son and he give you peace in the name of the precious holy ghost psalms 121 i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord he will not mm -hmm. oh the lord is my keeper the lord is my shade upon my right hand Mm -hmm. The Lord that keep it deep, my health, hello somebody, all of my health cometh from the Lord. Psalms 120, try singing it, try singing it, don't just read it, start try singing it, all right, sing it, sing it, no, sing it in the shower, sing it on your walk, sing it when you're eating breakfast. Oh my help, woo! My help, IG, God bless you. All of my help cometh from the Lord. My help, woo! My help, I feel this thing. My help, all of my help cometh from the Lord, my help, woo, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord, my help, woo, <laughs> my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Oh God, God, give us help today. Give us help today. Whatever we need. I'll help. All of my help cometh from my God. God bless you. We'll absolutely be praying for those who've lost loved one. On uh, Monday, we're having a uh, our homegoing service. Miss Him, thank you for your seed, Katrina. All right. Um, uh, a eulogy. Are we remembering those who lost loved ones during COVID-19? All right. I really needed this message this morning. Donna, thank you for letting me know that. Thank you so very much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All of my help. Come and trust me, I'm staying safe, Paul. I'm in my house. 
I'm in my house. I only let my dog out, but thank you for your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to work. Hallelujah. Make sure y'all check it out on YouTube. I'm going to put it back. Thank you for your seed. Thank you for your seed. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Boy, my mama sang that song. I bless my mother, Miss Janet Shepherd. That was her favorite Psalms. Woo! God bless you all. Psalms 121, Psalms 120.